So before lunch, we were examining this comparable interface, and we did one example. We were sorting the dogs by their age. You can see it's a fairly simple method to write. Now, there are two things I want to mention about this method. One thing that tends to confuse students sometimes is this expression right here. First, what I'm doing is I'm taking the object and I'm using this dot operator, which is an ownership operator, and I'm saying I want the age for the other dog. And what confuses students about this is that age is a private variable. You notice that age is a private variable. So a lot of times they ask themselves, how is it that I can do other dot age and access that variable, even though it's private, without having to do a get age? Because the whole idea behind object-oriented programming that we learn in this class is that you can access private variables. So my question to you is, how come I didn't have to do a get age? By the way, I could do a get age here if I wanted to. It's just not needed. And what I want to know is, how come I didn't need to do a get age since the age is private here? Ms. Siegel, what is your guess as to why I didn't have to do a get age here? We're inside the dog class. A class always has to be able to access its variables. That's what private means. So therefore, there's no issue about accessing the age variable because you can see we're still inside the dog class. So that's not a problem. So that's item number one. The other th thing is that if you were to look at this method, it turns out that this entire method can be written as a single line instead of using these two if statements and a return. I would like you to see if you can work with your partner in crunching this code down to a simple single line. I'm going to comment this out for just a second, and we're going to put the single line solution right down here. I'll give you a hint. It starts with return. It's like this. So what happens here, if the two are the same, you'll return a zero. If this dot age is less than other dot age, you'll return a negative number. Remember, the actual size of the negative number doesn't matter. Right? And if this dot age, if this dog is older than the other dog, you'll return a positive number. And so this single line solution will allow you to provide the same functionality as all this. So let's compile and run this and show you that this works equally well. And you can see here, once again, the dogs have been sorted in age order. I need to give you a warning about this kind of a solution here. This only works when the data types that you're comparing are integers. There is a potential to misuse this strategy. I'm going to show you that next when we're going to ask you to write another compare to method. This time, I would like you to sort the dogs by weight. So let me do this for you first. I don't think we need this anymore. And then I'm going to comment this code out right here for the whole method. And I'm going to ask you to write another one right underneath it. This time, what I want you to do is sort the dogs by weight. Please do not use this single line strategy. Please use the if statements that I showed you earlier. Let's say I want to have them go from the lowest weight to the highest weight. What would I return here, sir? No, it's going to be a positive. If, if my dog is heavier, it needs to be later in the list. That later in the list is a positive number. Uh, that's OK. Keep going. OK, so now let's try out this flavor right here. And you can see that the weights of the dogs now are increasing. Now what I want to do is go over with you how this can be done incorrectly by if you're trying to do it as a single line, uh, someone might be tempted to do this. Look. What's the first problem with this strategy? Who can tell me? Mr. Borden, it returns a double. I need to return an integer. Can I just change this to a double? No, the comparable interface has its rules and you can't change the rules. So you can see here, that it's going to return a double. And what ends up happening is students look at this and say, oh, that's not a problem. I'll just cast it to an integer. So they'll do this, look. And my question is, will this always work? All right, let's look at this situation here where I have one dog that weighs 97.3 pounds and I have another dog that weighs 97.7 pounds. Which dog should come first? Let's say this is the A dog over here and this is the B dog over here. So should A or B come first if this, this is the weight of one dog and that's the weight of the other dog? A dog should come first. If I plug these numbers into this formula here, what's the return value going to be, Mr. Degos? It's going to be zero because you can see it's going to end up with just a small decimal number. And when you cast it to an integer, it will turn it into a zero. So 
basically the, the, the rule to follow here is that don't try this single line approach unless you're dealing with integers. If you're dealing with decimal numbers or some other type, you need to make it using the if statements. All right, we're going to do one more. This one initially will seem harder to you, but it's actually the easiest of the ones to write. We're going to now try to sort the dogs by alphabetical order. See if you can figure out how to do that. I'm going to give you a hint. Strings already implement the comparable interface. Strings already do that. So when the string class was written, it already implements comparable and does everything that you need to do to join the comparable club. That's going to be useful to you here as you try to alphabetize the dogs. The compare to method is sometimes also called to check for equality. And that's when you're going to need a zero value return to see if the two are equal or not. Okay, the compare to method isn't just used for comparable. We're trying to write a compare to method now that allows us to alphabetize the dogs. If some of you are struggling with how to do that, I'll give you a hint. It's a single line. It starts off with return. And you can see what I'm doing here. This dot name is a string. So I put one string on one side of the compare to, and I put the other string inside the compare to. And now I'm letting the compare to that's already built into the string class do all the work. No, sir, uh, age and weight are not strings. So they're primitives. So they don't implement any interfaces and stuff because primitives don't have any fancy features. But strings are a class, and this class happens to have implemented comparable already. So let's run this one now and show you that we're able to alphabetize the dogs. So you can see it's Buna, Huna, Luna, and Tuna now. So you can see that this also works. I have one final exercise for you, and then we're going to declare victory. Mr. Deguj, do you have a question, sir? So if you have a, two strings like this, this is not really a topic for today, but since you brought it up, I'll, I'll just answer it. So let's say you have a string that looks like this and another string that looks like this, right? Now, you know that if you were to compare these as numbers, this one would come first because it's a smaller number than that, right? Now, if I was to change it like this, let's say I go, um, now you agree with me that this is still a smaller number than that, right? If we were just looking at numbers. However, if you were comparing it as strings, it's gonna look, these up in alphabetical order. So it'll compare the ones and say it's a tie, two, three. When it gets to the four, you'll see it'll say that this string will come before this string because the four comes before the nine. Okay, so if you have a one versus an A and you wanna know what comes first, you need to look up the ASCII values of the characters. Let me show you how to do that. This is something we learn in principles class, but if you haven't taken computer science principles, you probably haven't seen this table. So this is the ASCII table, and you can see that every character, the A, the little a, by the way, which has a different value from capital A, the little a has a decimal value of 97. And if you com compare that to the number one, which is, uh, or number one has a decimal value of 49, you can see that the one will come before the A. And interestingly, by the way, in ASCII, the capital letters come before the little letters which is not that intuitive, but they do. Okay, I have one more exercise for you to do on comparable, and then we're going to declare victory today. What I want you to do this time is I want you to rewrite the compare to method one more time. And what I want you to do is say to, we're going to compare using weight and age. Age will be the primary criteria for sorting, but if there's a tie on age, then we want to use the weight to finish sorting. In other words, if the two dogs have different ages, then put the younger dog first in the list. But if they're the same age, then put the skinnier dog on the list first. Okay, so we're going to have a two-level sort, two-level sort. Uh, and so what I want you to do now is make a more complicated compare to that is going to use age as the primary criteria, but when it's a tie, switch over to using weight as the criteria. If the age and the weight are both the same, then you should return a zero. Let me change up my test cases also to test this out a little bit. Um, I'll make both dogs uh, uh, age 12 here. And so that'll give us a better test case for whether our two level sorting is working. Mr. Pandali, sir, uh, we wanna do this two level sort here. Have you Are you finished? Okay, so this you can see. Now, if it gets to here, if the code gets to here, 
that means the ages must be the same, right? Because otherwise one of these other return statements would have hit earlier. So now if I run this one, and by the way, I've changed the, the data so that they both are 12 years old now, so we can test out this two-level sorting in, in action. And now if I run this, you can see here that the two dogs that are both 12 years old, the, the lighter dog comes first before the heavier dog, so that, that's good. Okay, so that is my little wrap-up for you on the comparable interface.